Okay, so I'm going to describe the central limit theorem here, but I'm not going to actually prove it. I'm just going to uh, state the result that comes from it. And uh, the general idea here is that xn bar, our sample mean, uh, which is drawn from these samples of the xi, where the xi's are distributed from mu and sigma square distribution, that xn bar and mu are kind of related to each other. Uh, that's basically the theory behind the central limit theorem, which states that as n becomes larger and larger, uh, xn bar gets closer and closer to mu. And uh, that's why it's called the limit. So as the limit as n tends to infinity is that the sample mean converges to the population mean. And intuitively that makes sense because in some sample means will be larger than mu, some will be smaller than mu. But, over, uh, but uh, in the end when you have a large number of samples as n grows more and more, uh, we should be seeing uh, mu because the expected value because the expected value of uh, xn bar after all is mu, so you know that's not too much of a surprise. Um, more specifically, what we can say is that the uh, difference between xn bar and mu, so xn bar minus mu, if we take this and we are going to divide it by the standard deviation, so we're going to uh, we're going to actually, the standard deviation, remember, of, of x n bar is sigma by sigma, the variance is sigma square by n, so the standard deviation is sigma by square root n. So this quantity can be thought of as essentially normalizing x n bar. So x n bar minus mu says, okay, I'm going to subtract off the, the, uh, the, mean from it, the population mean from it. So this one is going to center the variable numerator to be centered around zero. And then by dividing by sigma by square root n, we're getting something which is going to have hopefully unit variance. And this says that this is going to be distributed normally as zero one for n tends to infinity. And that's really a pretty strong statement. It's saying that uh, this quantity which you can measure and the population parameters are related in the way such that this quantity over here looks like a normal quantity. Now, of course, the problem is that we don't know sigma. So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, let's assume that the sample mean Sn that I defined earlier is approximately equal to sigma. So we're going to just assume that. And then we will look at the quantity square, uh, square root 10, Xn bar minus mu, over Sn is approximately normally distributed as a zero one quantity. And so in this equation, we have uh, Sn is known. We have that because we can, it, it's, a, it's a measurable thing, so we can measure Sn. We can measure Xn bar, we know n. We don't know mu, but that's okay. And what we're doing is we're basically relating Xn bar and mu through n and Sn. And, uh, and by using essentially the properties of a standard normal distribution. And so this allows us to use a normal distribution. So let me be more precise about what I mean by that. The N01 distribution is the, is the zero mean and it's the bell-shaped normal distribution and which has a sigma square equal to one. So the variance sigma square equal to one, so sigma equals one. So basically, uh, this is what it looks like. My drawing is not very good, but it is symmetric around zero, and that's normal distribution. But more importantly, we actually know the value that uh, of the probability mass that lies to either side for each value of sigma. So if I take over here, for example, two sigma, then I know that the probability of lying outside the two sigma on each side is approximately uh, 5%. So 95% of the time you have plus minus two sigma, 99% of the time between plus minus three sigma and so on. So if we want to uh, bound the probability mass, then we're gonna say that we should be plus minus sigma of the central value. And we'll use this fact to compute confidence intervals uh, as I'll show in the next segment.